service. The benefit is, it's for you all as well. So if you're coming for choir or you want to come, you're invited to come be a part of that. At 6 o'clock, we will have what's called an edgy worship. And that means it's going to be more interactive. It's going to be around the topic of confirmation for the night. But here's what I know about Hosanna. We value the intergenerational relationship. So all are invited to come for that. We are also going to have communion as part of that on Wednesday nights, that we will be communing. And this allows those of us that are away every other weekend or away and not able to come and worship on weekends to have a worship opportunity on Wednesday night. It's 30 minutes. It will be short. It will be interactive. It won't be anything like you've seen in here, done in here, or we've done outside. But I ask you to come with an open heart, come with an you know, um, expectation and wonder and a willingness to participate. Bring your lawn chairs. We will be around the campfire. We will ask that we social distance and be respectful of that and be COVID aware. So, with that, before I hand it over for acknowledge our God's work, our hands people, I would like to pause us for a moment. This weekend, we remember 20 years ago, 9-11. Anybody who is 22, 23, 24 and up would probably all remember exactly what we were doing that day. So I'd like to take a moment to pause for a time of silence, and we will end the silence um, with a moment of prayer. So let us have a bow of silence. Merciful God, as we remember 9-11, bring comfort to those who mourn, relief to those who witness devastation, healing to those still suffering in pain, physical pain and emotional trauma. Bring reconciliation to a world in need of peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, I want all those who are helping with the planning of God's work, our hands, to please stand up now so we can acknowledge you. later in the day. All right, you're ready to get us started in worship? We are ready. All right, we're going to hand it over to our musicians. All right, and uh, we're doing a, a wait till, all right, now you probably can hear me without a microphone because I've got one of those voices. Anyway, we're doing a song. If you know the motions, especially I'm looking at the young folks here in the audience, please do the, the motions with us.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Ever-living God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Followers, 
let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me, of my words, in this abundance and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when it comes in the glory of the Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be saying Who do you say that I am? Jesus asked his disciples. And they answered quickly, well, some say the disciples say a prophet, and some say Elijah, and some say Moses. And Jesus pushes them. And Jesus says to them, but who do you say that I am? And in Peter's response, you are the Messiah. In that response came a transition, a transformation in the lives of the disciples. In that moment, their life began to be radically transformed by the gift of grace, the power and promise, the saving promise, their expectation of who Jesus is. He tells them what's going to happen. And as they come in the following weeks in his journey and days in his journey, they even will learn the why as they gather with him in the Last Supper. It's more than the physical healings. It's more than this. It's for the forgiveness of your sins to bring you to eternal life. Here's what I want you to hear about the disciples today. The disciples were not perfect. Yet they were transformed. They truly weren't extraordinary. Actually, they were quite ordinary. But with God, extraordinary things happen. You ever doubt it? Really? How did you get here today? How did you hear the story of the saving and redeeming love of Jesus Christ? Because of the faithfulness of extraordinarily disciples, those ordinary people who've gone before you, starting with those motley twelve and centuries of disciples sharing their faith and still give us glimpses of God at work and are still witnesses of God at work today. You and I live in the power and the promise of being beloved children of God sent into this world to bear God's redeeming love to a world that so desperately needs to experience this love, mercy, and grace. So I ask you today on this God's Work Our Hands Sunday, how would you answer Jesus if he stood before you today and asked you this question? Who do you say that I am? Let me ask that again. Who do you? Who do you, I'm moving Mark, sorry. Who do you all, who do you say Jesus is? For it's work within ordinary people living ordinary lives, our lives, doing ordinary things, but we still encounter moments. We are still called and we still receive revelation of who and what Jesus is. And when we do, oftentimes, that'll change our perspective. 
that causes us to see Jesus in the face of others. To see Jesus present in situations we find ourselves. Or Jesus calls us, or in reality sometimes pushes us, to be the hands and feet, to be part of God's work in this world. I love taking families and youth on mission trips. And one of the things about mission trips is it pushes us outside of our comfort zones. I took a group of kids from Medellin and Truman on a great mission trip. It was exotic and it was out of their comfort zones. However, it ended up being in their backyard. And when I advertised it, the first thing they said to me is, well, I go up to St. Paul all the time. But we went. And we went to the Dorothy Day Center, which if you get, don't know where that is, that's right now next to the XL Energy Center. I have huge hockey fans who went up to wild games all the time. And he looked at me as soon as we got back, and months after we got back, and said to me, you've ruined it for me. And I looked at him, he goes, you've ruined my hockey trip for me. I'm like, why? He goes, I can't unsee what I saw at the Dorothy Day Center a block away. <coughs> he went back and he told his parents, and they probably were season ticket holders, they were there all the time. And he went back and told his mom and dad, I can't unsee it. Why not? He met the residents and people the clients that use the Dorothy Day Center. This kid had money. And he loved to spend money on expensive tennis shoes. And for me to say that this kid had a different pair of tennis shoes for every day of the week would be a gross understatement. You know what he does now? Every time they go to a hockey game, he takes up five pairs of shoes and drops them off at the door of the game center. Because he's got huge man sized feet. And those were always the shoes they didn't have. That young man was not a regular church attender. His family weren't regular church attenders. And even when I left, they were periodic church attenders. But in that mission trip, Jesus transformed his life. Because it wasn't all about him anymore. He saw the need of the other and was moved to respond. Today, we gather together to participate in God's work our hands day. And I challenge you to answer this question. Who do you say that Jesus is? Do we proclaim? Yeah, we do. You are the Messiah. You are our Savior. But today is a day reminding us of moving beyond just our words, but to our actions. This is the day that the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America we join together as one church. We are not the only ones that have the yellow shirts. I didn't wear a yellow shirt today because on the back of my shirt was the name of the wrong church. <laughs> but these yellow shirts are all over the nation. And we're joined as one to proclaim that we believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And in that, we are freed in Christ from the bondage of sin to love and serve our neighbor. Our service activities offer an experience and opportunity.
to explore one of our basic tenets as the ELCA. As disciples of Christ, all of the life we live, every bit of our life, every act of service, every daily calling, every corner of our life, every time we encounter someone, may the love of Christ flow freely from us living and daring in the confidence of God's grace. All of our life is an answer to our witness and a witness to our answer to Jesus' question. Who do you say that I am? I pray that this week, weekend, this experience today, you experience Jesus' face as you serve. I pray that you experience Jesus' grace and love and mercy <coughs> with the people you serve here, with the people you serve as we leave from here in some projects. But I pray that today is more than that. I pray that today, when you leave, May you be filled with a sense of awareness. May you be filled with a sense of wonder. May you be filled with the intent to ponder your answer to the question. And then reflect and play how you are going to live out your life beyond today, beyond God's work, our hands today, but into the life this week you will live, and the weeks, and the months, and the years. May you encounter Jesus in ways that you can't unsee. For you are called. Remember, God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. My siblings in Christ, we are recipients of God's love, mercy, grace. May we boldly share that with our world. God invites us into God's work not only with our hands, not only with our feet, not only with our words, but with our hearts and our lives. Amen.
in prayer for the needs of the world. For your work in the church, we give thanks. Plans and tender relationships among faith communities, both Emmanuel and interfaith, that in faithful listening, speech, and action, our words and hands work to bear fruit for the sake of all in need. God of grace, we pray. Yes, when we call. For your work among the nations, we give thanks. Directed leaders in passive, honest service, that both your words and actions are carried out on behalf of those whom they serve. God of righteousness, we pray. Hear us when we call. For your work in places of need, we give thanks. Sustain all who are weary by unemployment or lack of adequate food or housing. That we advocate for relief and just policy. Bring healing to all who are sick through the skillful hands and compassionate hearts of physicians, nurses, therapists, and caregivers. We pray especially for those among us that are ill or hurting. Dell, Mike, Brent, Joe Youngstrom's father, Jack, Michelle, Sandy, Larry, Doug, Chuck, Terry Ashworth's brother-in-law, Dan, Cindy Finnegan's mother, Marlis, and Beth's nephew. God of restoration, we pray. Hear us when we call. For your work, this worshiping community, we give thanks. Bless the service projects of this day and throughout the year. Foster deeper connections among those who serve and a spirit of accompaniment as we work alongside those in our community. Strengthen our faith that we trust God moving in and among us. God of love, we pray. Redeeming God, you accompany your people through every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace, especially Velma Brandt, Kathy Brandt Rucker's grandmother. Prayers for comfort for Kathy and her family during this time. God of resurrection, we pray. Receive these in all our prayers, gracious God. We pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. around. We're still doing non-contact signs of peace, so peace be with you all. As you came in today, you should have received communion elements in a package that looks like this. As we prepare to receive, I want to make sure we all understand and know how to get into these delightful little, little packets. There are two layers of wrap. The first layer is a clear plastic wrap. You will remove that to get to your bread. I would recommend taking that one off now so we have that when we're ready. After you receive the bread, then I'd invite you to take the purple wrap off so we don't have open liquid and you don't spill all over your stuff. So let's prepare for communion. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved people of God, this is the body of Christ given for you. I'm 
invite you to take the purple wrap off. And hear these words. The blood of Christ shed for you. The love of people of God, having been fed and nourished by the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you go now strengthened and equipped and kept in God's amazing grace. Amen. Well, on this God's Work Our Hands Day, we are sending you from the table in a different way. Please join me in the, in the response. Siblings in Christ, both our work and our rest are in God. Will you endeavor to pattern your life on the Lord Jesus Christ in gratitude with God, to God and in service with others at morning and at evening and at work and at play all the days of your life? I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have knit us, your servants, into one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with favor upon us in our commitment to serve in Christ's name. Give us courage, patience, and vision. Strengthen us in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Just a little bit of instruction. Um, today, our projects, we were going to have them start um, at 10.15, but I think we can probably, once we leave here, we can go out um, and start those projects. And you're free to take part in one or whatever, or all of them if you'd like. So we've kind of switched a little bit. In the west lawn underneath the tents, we're going to be assembling some blessing bags. These bags are going to be filled with personal hygiene items that the congregation has donated and that we did um, go out and get a grant to buy some extras for. Um, and those bags are going to actually be given to the Salvation Army to distribute. Um, we're going to be tying some fleece underneath the tents as well. And Mandy, I'm not sure, where are we giving those blankets to? Project Linus. Okay, Project Linus. And then they distribute them to the people that the actual groups that need them. Um, in the quad room, we're going to be making some greeting cards, and our goal is um, to make a hundred of them, and those are going to be donated to the Ronald McDonald House, so the residents there can send out greeting cards. Um, in the garden, we're going to be harvesting the garden, and Dave says there's lots to harvest, um, and whatever we harvest today, we're going to bring to the fire stations, the local fire departments here in Rochester. We've done that actually for quite a few years. And then in the gathering space, if you are new to Hosanna, it's called Six Can Soup. If you're old to Hosanna, it's still called Six Can Soup. <laughs> it's basically six cans of different ingredients that we put together and package in a paper bag. And then we give them out at our pantry um, or to people who come to Hosanna looking for food. And in that, there's a recipe. And all six of those cans can be used to make a meal. Um, and outside here by the education entrance, we're going to be coloring bookmarks and laminating those. And they will be placed in books that are going to be placed in the little libraries around Rochester. So our afternoon projects are going to be the highway cleanup. We have a, a stretch of highway that's down on Highway 52 by the mall. Paul Anderson's going to head that up. Um, and then we're going to distribute the books that were donated by all of you, which are a large amount. Um, and the bookmarks that we're coloring actually have a connect theme on them, along with Hosanna's name and address and phone number. And then there's a picture on the back that are going to be color it's going to be colored. We're not going to be able to color them all and laminate them, but we're all going we're going to see that every book we send is going to be put a bookmark in. So then whoever gets it, they can color it or do whatever. And then we're going to be serving lunch um, this afternoon at the landing. And the landing is located at the old fire station located um, by Silver Lake. And um, we're going to be doing the lunch, and then we have a ton of 
gently used items, and snack donations that we're going to also be delivering when we go there as well. And then we will have some refreshments for you. Unfortunately, we can't serve lunch. So the refreshments will be on your way out the door as you leave this after this morning. So thank you all. Thank you. Once again. To, to those all who have set things up. Just a reminder, when you're in the building, we request that you continue to mask and social distance as, as much as you are able to. Uh, when you are outside, please social distance, but if you're out, be respectful of social distance, but you do not need to wear your masks when you're outside. We just want to make sure we are protecting our most vulnerable in our community. Thank you for your cooperation. And now the blessing. Friends in Christ, today we give thanks to God and seek God's blessing as we are sent out with this God's Work Our Hands Sunday. Bless each of our projects, the hands that have organized them, the hands that complete them. Bless those who receive the fruits of our service this day. May the gifts we use and share be signs of your love to all people. Renew in us now commitment to use our gifts in the service of others, especially those in need. Let us be your hands and to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, comfort the weary, welcome the stranger, care for creation, and be loving neighbors to all people. And now, go in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, who loves you and blesses you and keeps you, now and forever. Amen. Kelly.